Hey guys, it's Carl Brown from GuitarLessons365.com. Another gorgeous 80s ballad today. We're learning how to do Please Forgive Me by the great Brian Adams. I think he's probably, if not the greatest voice of the 80s, <laughs> right there. Right, right there. I mean, close. Probably is the best. My, I mean, everybody has their favorites, but man, you just can't get wrong with it. It's just an amazing voice. Anyway, that's why I suck at singing this song. So I apologize. I'm just doing it as a place setter so you know where I'm at in the song. Because people complain when I don't. I'd rather not sing, trust me. Uh, but I'm gonna, just so you'll know where I'm at. Alright, but before I get into it, please subscribe to the channel if you have not already. And ring that notification bell so you'll know when I release a new video. Um, so you can comment, like, and comment the video. It's gonna help me out on the YouTube business. And if you really want to support what I do here on YouTube, the best way possible is to just join my Guitar Academy. You'll see a link to the description below. It's the GL365 Academy. You've got a great community over there. The Academy contains all my guitar courses, from complete beginner courses to more advanced courses in um, uh, you know, technique, improvisation, ear training, theory, guitar tone, you name it. There's a lot of cool stuff over there. And you get personalized support from me as well. So um, you're not just going to be alone trying to figure out what to do with the courses. So please go check it out. And you click the link below, you get a free seven-day trial. All right, so we are set up here with um, um, in standard tuning. So, all right, so we had this intro. So just to preface this, I'm really not trying to do all the normal, the regular guitar chords. And there's a couple of solos in there. We're not doing this. I'm kind of doing like a singer-songwriter version of this. Uh, so I'm really trying to recreate a lot of the instrumentation that the full arrangement, the whole band, everything that you're hearing on the recording. So. It's not like a simplified guitar arrangement or whatever. Um, I'm trying to do all that. So if you hear this not on the guitar, I'm trying to make it happen. So that makes it a little bit challenging to play at certain sections. Um, but um, yeah, I'll give you some, you know, I'll, some bare bones stuff along the way if you just want to kind of stick with that too. Um, but I like this version. All right, so let's start with the intro. So the intro, before anything kicks in, we have this. All right, so that's basically based around, you have the second fret on the D and the G, and then you hit the open B with it, i.e. Uh, open B, I'm sorry. So I have this. So just pick up the D string, the G string, and the open B. And then just pick up the note on the D string. So now I make it an open D string and pick the same three strings. So that's what you hear there in the intro. That's actually on a guitar, uh, an electric guitar, not an acoustic. But then we have this. All 
All right, so that's going to be um, starting with an A major chord. So we're going to have to play this with a bar. So open A string, second fret across the D, G, and the B. So when you're doing this, I keep going back and hitting the open A string to kind of keep that going. So I strum the chord, go back and hit the open A, and then when I go back to hit the, the notes, I'm just going to hit the notes on the G and the B together. So there's a barring at the second fret. And then when I'm going to start moving the notes around on those strings, I'm going to play the third fret now on the B string with my middle finger there, and then the fourth fret there on the G string with my ring finger. So I pick those two strings, and then back to the open A, and then move them up two frets to five and six, same strings, like this. do the same thing we're going to base it off of an E major chord so you start with just a regular E major chord so strum an E major then hit the open E and then we're going to start doing that kind of same thing where we're picking two strings and going back and hitting the low E so those two strings I'm already holding them it says the first fret on the G and the second fret on the D and you're going to move that up you're going to play the fourth fret on the D second fret on the G Open E again, and then move them up two frets again. So this. So we this so far. All right, then we're gonna go to an F sharp minor chord. And we can't do the two, to the full intervals that are being played. It's the same things are going through all the chords, uh, but we can't do it here on the B minor. I mean, I saw the F sharp minor seven. So uh, F sharp minor period. Um, it, it becomes a minor seven at the end. But we have a full bar here at the second fret, fourth fret on the A, fourth fret on the D. So I'm just kind of strum that, kind of strum the chord, hit the low note, chord, low note, and then we're gonna start doing it. That's all we can really get of that part is the top note in. You can't do it. Uh, yeah, I'm, not, I'm not gonna put you through that. So it's basically that means strum a couple times in the F sharp minor. Then you put the third fret there on the B string. Then hit the low E string there that you're playing or at the second fret, and then pick up your pinky and play the fifth fret on the B with it. And then back to the low E. So we. Because it's about as close as we can get to it. And then we have this. So that's just a play the fourth fret there on the A string, second fret on the G, and open B. And then you're gonna go to a D major chord. And it sounds better actually to make it a D, uh, just a D5 chord. So it sounds open A string, open D string, second fret on the G, and third fret on the B, and kind of eliminate the high E string. It just sounds better when I'm getting that F sharp in there. So. All right, now here it transitions to the verse. So over this, this, let me go through this chord real quick for one more time. So 
It starts out kind of with the same thing we did in the intro, and then it goes off to some really cool chords after that. So um, we're going to start here after this D. That's an E sus4 chord. So if you know what an E major chord is, hopefully you do, it's just going to move that note on the, the first fret on the G string, move it up to the second fret of the G. So that makes it second fret on the A, D, and G string, and all the other strings are open. And he, a little back strong. So it's kind of just a kind of a five chord bringing us to the one. So then it's similar to what we did in the intro. Now here, after this little F sharp minor, you're not going to do any more melodies here. You're just going to go up and set up playing this, like we did there to stop on the intro. We're going to go up and play like a normal C sharp minor chord. So that's just going to bar across the fourth fret, just across to the A string. So a five string bar, and then you're going to have the fifth fret there on the B string, six on the G, six on the D. And then take that to the D chord again. Now you see a lot of times when I play in the D chord and throughout this song, I've got the A in the bass, especially the, the bigger, like the pre-chorus uh, and stuff like that. So you're gonna hear that, it just kind of fills up the sound. So it's just a regular D major chord, but I have the open A string in the bass too. Um, so right there we have this. So we have this. It feels like the first night together. Now here we go to an A sus two chord, so and he kind of pick uh, it's, this it kind of sounds good to pick across at first, and then you can strum it real quick. So it's open A string, second fret on the D, second fret on the G, open B. So you're placing the third with the second note in the scale in the chord on the scale. So it's a it's an A sus two instead of a regular major chord. So you kind of just strum, pick a cross from the A to the B string, and then kind of strum it real quick, and then do this kind of the same thing on the E. Except I'm hitting a low E string, and then the fourth, uh, the low E, D, G, B strum. So we have this. All right, now we have um, an F sharp minor at 11 chord. So kind of the same rhythm that I did down here. So what I'm doing here is I'm holding this chord now. I'm doing this, holding it like this so we can actually, you don't really have to have this F sharp in the bass if you don't want to. Um, it's much harder, but I like the way it sounds. But um, we have this F sharp. I'm going to pick that instead of the fifth string. So you could do it like this. Fifth, uh, just the A string at the fourth fret uh, and the B string at the fourth fret. Second fret on the G, open B. Like that. Kind of make it easier. Let's drum across them. But I like picking the F sharp in the bass, so I use my thumb to grab that. Then I pick the D, and then the G, the open B, and then strum the chord. So I... Still okay. First time I then it goes up to a C sharp minor, a C sharp dominant seven chord. So that's a bar at the fourth fret across uh, five strings. And you're gonna in front of it you're gonna have the sixth fret on the D and then the sixth fret on the B. Then we go back to that same F sharp minor at eleven chord. Um, and played kind of the same way. So we have this. Here, 
here we go to a uh, this is a C sharp seven flat nine chord. So that's going to be fourth fret on the A, third fret on the D, fourth fret on the G, third fret on the B. So pick across those four strings, and then you can strum it. Then back to the A sus two, pick across to the E again, just like. So all together there for the uh, verse is this. So. things. Alright, so that starts with an, an A chord, and then to the F sharp minor chord real quick, back to the A, to the D major chord, and like I said, with that A in the bass. So, 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 so it's a quick A, F sharp minor, A. These are easier chords, obviously. So then we get to the E major chord. You're the only one I've ever All right, so then back to the A. So we're already at the A, then we're just gonna go to that F minor again, A to D. So you see, the first time we hit the A was real quick. So that. So we can just just go back to that F sharp minor, A to D, D. back to the E. So I follow a little more than I should. So that's that E to the F sharp minor to the D, D in the bass. One more time through the pre-chorus. So if you're This chorus number one because the chorus at the end of the song is different, different key. We have this for the first chorus. Please forgive me. of the track so to get all this to go on got some crafty arrangements here so we have an A major chord first so it's kind of the same thing we did before with the same we're kind of 
of isolating two strings and then going back to the low, the bass string. So we're doing the same thing here. We're gonna start just strum an A major chord. Then you're gonna pick the open A string and then pick just the G and the B. So, please forgive me. Like that. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the notes on the G and the B. We're gonna play the first fret on the G string and then the open B string. And then rotate that with the um, the uh, open A string. So we have this. And then go back to the ones with the second fret on the G and the B. So, please forgive me. And then we have for the second line. We can't strum across here because we've got some strings you don't want to be heard. So we're just basically now picking, we're still picking the same thing up top. So we're playing the second fret on the G and the B, down to the first fret on the G and the open B, and then back to the second fret on each. But instead of the open A string, we're going to have this F sharp in the bass. So we're just rotating between those. Please forgive me. I can't stop loving you. Don't deny me. So the A to the F sharp looks like this. Please forgive me. I know not what I do. Please forgive me. I can't stop loving you. Don't deny me. So here it's a little bit different. We go up to this D major chord. So you can play the full D chord, kind of hitting it, and then the open D, hit it again, with the open, then the open D. And then we're gonna change the note on top. So it's the first fret on the G again, but the third fret on the B, open high E string. So the notes that are changing. That's what's changing. Then back to the A version of that little riff. Please forgive me if I need you like I do. All right, then we can do this. Please believe that I see is true. So that's the riff we did earlier in the intro of the song, which is around the E chord. And then you don't hit this last one twice. Though. that like you don't go and hit this open E the second time. You grab that D chord real quick and then go back to the A just to an A major chord. To, to an E. Alright, so all together for the chorus. Please forgive me. I know not what I do. Please forgive me. I can't stop loving you. Don't deny me. Then we have a little slide solo, I guess. It's pretty short. Like I said, I'm not gonna do the solos. But the chords underneath the solo is just like kind of like the intro, so you can play that, but it's an abbreviated version of it. it looks like this. Alright, so it's just that same riff we did in the intro. But after that F sharp, just goes straight to a, an E sus4 chord, which once again, just like at the beginning of the song, we did a kind of a backward strum on it. It takes us to the verse again. So the verse, we go back through the verse section again, exact same as the first one, exact same pre-chorus and exact same chorus. So nothing new to learn there. 
um, were basically to the second solo of the song. So you go back through everything we just did, you repeat everything. Um, uh, but then we get to the second solo. Chords are different underneath the second solo. So this is coming out of the second chorus. You have this E, this ringing here. And then we get to this chord progression on underneath the solo. So that's just an F sharp minor chord to D, then F sharp to E. Back to F sharp minor to D. So it's F sharp minor to D, F sharp minor to E, F sharp minor back to the D again. And then uh, we're going to end this out. Obviously, you're not doing the solos. If you're a singer songwriter, you might want to just play these chords. It gives you a chance to take a breath because this guy can sing and it's about to get really high. So you need to prep for it. Uh, so we have this F sharp, to D, F sharp minor to D, F sharp minor to E, F sharp minor to D. And then we're going to end the, the progression underneath the solo with just that F sharp minor to A. And then transitioning to the bridge with that D chord and then when you get to the E you're in the bridge so we have this like I just did. Um, so that's the E major chord. The D to A. Then back to the D to E. Then D A again. D A. So it's similar to the progression in, under the second solo, but it's just a, a you know different key. So it is. So start the E. real quick for you again. transition up to instead of this next chorus the last chorus in the song the end of the song is in B so we've moved the chorus up uh, a whole step making it just even <laughs> just much easier to sing right no I'm a lot tougher to sing um, I think no one deny me yeah it still sucks I can't sing it uh, so we have uh, some interesting chords here I'm going to abbreviate one of the chords here. You can keep doing this little, um, little riff on it, but it's, it's pretty challenging. So I'll show you how to do it if you wanted to, but it's probably something you're going to kind of not want to do. So it's, a, it's on the G sharp minor chord. So when I do that, I might kind of do it. So kind of do what the actual guitar line for that song, that part of the song is. Anyway, here's a, here it is. Please forgive me, I know not what I do. Please forgive me, I can't stop loving you. Don't deny me, this pain I'm going through. Please forgive me, if I need you like I do.
that section too. We'll get to it. All right, so um, anyway, so that is in B now. So we're playing just a B major chord. Kind of doing that same thing. We're kind of strumming the top of the chord and then hitting the root note. And then we're going to change the notes on top. So I'm going to play basically um, the, you've got a bar across the second fret. You're going to play the second fret on the B there with that bar, third fret on the G. And uh, still fourth fret on the D. Still holding the root note. So we have this. Please forgive me. Now here's what I'm talking about. In order to play this G sharp minor, so if you're one of the people that can play pinky bars, pretty easy. Then it's, you can keep that going from here to the pinky bar. But I realize when I throw a pinky bar on there, um, get a lot of hate mail. Yeah, I get a lot of hate mail. It's a few death threats. So I'm gonna show you how to do it, and I'm gonna show you an alternative. So we have this. So that B to the, to the same thing that we did earlier. That kind of stuff. Back to the B. And then we go here. So the top version is going to be barring the fourth fret on the G and the B. It's just so we can back going, but you need to get this root note in there too. So we have the fourth fret on the G and the B, and then the fourth fret there on the E. Keep in mind, I'm going to give you an alternative for this. You don't have to do this. So I'm hitting those two strings back to the low E a couple times, and then I change the notes on top. Well, this is easily doable. So third fret on the G, second fret on the B. And then back to the beautiful bar. So that sounds much better. So that sounds cool. Too hard to play for a lot of people. So instead, for this G sharp minor, you can go over here. Because the guitar does do that on the actual recording. We have... So we have this like... You can just bar across three strings here on the top, on the fourth fret. And then play the sixth fret there on the D. Stop loving you. And then you're going to hammer on. Pick the fourth string. I mean, I'm sorry, the, fourth, the B string on the fourth fret. And then play seventh fret on the high E string. And then pick the B string again and pull back off to the uh, fourth fret. So, please forgive me. I can't stop loving you. So, you can do that or this. I can't stop loving you. Now, I like doing it. You can do it like this, too. You don't have to do the bar, but you see you lose the root note, and I don't think that sounds good. But I'll give you that option too. Fourth fret on the G and the and the B, and then playing the root note there on the fourth fret, and then moving this over to that two and the three again, and playing that root note with your ring finger, and then back. Like I said, I like to keep it going, but it will sound like this if you don't. Alright, and then and then we get to the E major chord. That's cool. So it's just an E major kind of doing that thing on the regular E major. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna go up and grab the second fret on the D, third fret on the G, second fret on the B. So just those three strings. And back in the low E string with us with this. Don't uh, don't deny me. Then the same riff off of the B. So, so far for this uh, chorus in B. Please forgive me. I know not what to do. Please forgive me. 
here we used to go to an F uh, this one's gonna be not it's not F sharp minor anymore it's F sharp major so full bar to second fret fourth fret on the A fourth fret on the D third fret on the on the G to make it F sharp major chord hit that E back to the B little riff on the B Kind of keeps going back through those same chords. So if we get that first F sharp. Then the E to transition back to the B. Then you get to do that riff on the B. Back to the F sharp. Back to the E to transitions back to the B again. And then here at the end, you're just going to hit the B and just strum it once. And then the F sharp. I can't stop loving you. Now here at the end, there's a little little piano lick, repetitive lick. Um, I'm gonna make it on the guitar, so we have to play it in a little lower octave to do kind of kind of approximation of the lick, but we play it a little bit lower. I think it sounds cooler anyway. So you can start with an E strum or just go into a. So um, that little lick, so there is some E strums underneath it, but we're going to fancy it up a bit. So we're... so that little lick right there, I'm hitting the open E. You want to let these ring out as long as possible. Open E, second fret on the D, and then the open B string. Open E, second fret on the D, um, open B, then the um, second fret on the D again, then the third fret on the G. Go. So you kind of keep going like that. The second fret on the D, third fret on the, the G, back to the second fret on the D, open B, Back to the second fret on the G, uh, the D string. So there it is. Then you go back to the open B again. So basically, you hit the open E string and then play this D, this E note here as a pedal. So you pick this, then the open B, then pick that again, then the third fret on the G, and pick this again, then the open B again. This. And then you're gonna change things up by just playing the fourth fret on the on the um, D string. So that's a lick. And then when you start back over, you want to hold this as long as you can until you, you gotta start play that second fret there on the uh, D again. So hit this. So when you get to that low E, you start to lick over again. So you basically do it six times, and on that sixth time, you slow it down. Slow it down through it. And then you're going to end the song with a nice B sus2 chord. So that's just barring across five strings at the second fret. And you're going to have the fourth fret on the D, and the fourth fret on the G. So remember this note right there, so part of the bar, the second fret there on the B string, that's what makes it a sus2. So we have this. So basically like this all together. Anyway, 
I thought it was a nice ending. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. It's a great song. I wish they still wrote songs like this, but they do not. Um, but it's a great song. It's got a great voice. It's just uh, really well put together. So I hope you like this kind of guitar arrangement of it. I know it's kind of challenging, but hey, we all need a good challenge in life, right? All right, I'll see you guys again soon for guitarlessons365.com.